Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. Father, we thank you for the word tonight. I think a very important word. It's time to face issues in our life and stop running from them. And we know that that's your will. You want us to deal with things. You don't want us to be afraid of things and hiding from them. You don't want us to run away. You want us to face things and go through. So I pray that you'll put different things on people's hearts tonight that they need to deal with and that you will do a work here tonight that only you can do. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to talk to you tonight about ways that people run from their problems. How we avoid things instead of dealing with them. Because I believe that we are in a time in our society when so many people are running from everything from their responsibility to accountability. People run from hard work. They run from hard things. They try to avoid difficult places. They try to avoid difficult people. They try to avoid all kinds of pain. Not that anybody loves pain, but there's a little bit of pain always in being set free. People run from themselves. A lot of people don't even know themselves at all. They run from the truth. They run from the past. They're afraid of the future. But the Bible teaches us that God wants us to live courageously, that he wants us to be bold and strong in him, and to not really cower from anything, but to know that he is always with us, and because God is with us, we can face and deal with anything that we need to face and deal with in our lives. If you believe that, say amen. amen. I believe that Instead of running, we have to learn to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Now, there's an interesting thing about running, and I'm going to show you four different places in the Bible to prove this, that whatever you run from, God will eventually take you back to that thing or that place that you ran from, and you will have to deal with it before you can ever really get well. I got a few people that have actually been there, I guess, because you're getting it. Amen? Now, you know, I was abused by my father sexually, and so when I left home, I just thought, well, that was over, but I realized later that I took it with me, and it was in my soul, and I didn't want to deal with it. It was painful. I didn't want to deal with it, so effectively, I was running from it because I just didn't want to face it. I didn't, I didn't want to talk about it. I didn't want to pray about it. I just wanted to pretend like it didn't exist. I wonder if you have anything in your life from your past or even anything that maybe God's trying to deal with you about right now that you just have developed all these nifty little ways of just pretending like it doesn't exist. Because you really don't want to deal with it. Well, let me tell you something. Sweeping things under the rug, so to speak, is actually a very dangerous thing. Just because you choose not to look at it, that doesn't mean that it's not there. And God has anointed us to deal with stuff and not run. Well, eventually, and I'm not suggesting that anybody do what God had me do. I am suggesting, however, that you do whatever God does lead you to do. Now, let me say that again. You don't need to do what God led me to do, but you do need to do what God leads you to do, and he does lead us in different ways. So, I was praying one day, and I felt like God just put it on my heart. The time is not yet, but the time is going to come when you're going to have to go and face your father and confront him about what he did to you. If you've ever known anything about sexual abuse from watching TV programs or because it happened to you or from knowing somebody that it happened to, the whole thing operates on this terrible secrecy. Don't tell anybody. Don't tell your mother. Don't let anybody know. The abuser's telling you that it's a good thing, but at the same time, they're telling you to hide it, which is an oxymoron and doesn't make any sense. And so I spent my whole life hiding everything that he was 
doing to me, afraid to tell anybody. And the last person you ever confronted about it was him. I remember one time writing a letter telling him how awful what he was doing to me made me feel, and I just got in so much trouble and got punished, and so I was afraid to ever even attempt to say anything to him again. And I think one of the most devastating things for me was being forced to act as if I liked something that I actually hated and despised. It was manipulation and control in the worst way. So when God told me that I was going to have to go and confront him and speak with him openly about what he did to me and how it affected me, the very thoughts of it just scared the living daylights out of me, and it was the last thing in the world that I wanted to do. And I sure was glad that on that day, God spoke to my heart, the time is not now, but it will come. And so maybe I could just say to you tonight, maybe God's just wanting you to get ready, at least mentally, to be willing to deal with things that you may need to deal with in order to get well. You see, the thing is, is you can't run from things and hide from things and ever really get well. You know, whether it's a sin in your life that you need to deal openly with with God, whether you need to go back and make some restitution with somebody that you really hurt and wounded, maybe somebody in your life has really mistreated you and they're living in this fantasy land that it didn't bother them, and maybe for their sake you need to go back and in a loving way sit down and confront them and tell them what they did to you and how they made you feel. Sometimes you can't get well without that. And I know that all of you were not hurt in the way that I was hurt or the way that some other people in here have been hurt. But let me tell you, I believe that what I'm going to share with you tonight applies to every single one of us in some way, shape, or form. Even people who let other people manipulate them and control them because they're afraid to make them mad. Don't let somebody else steal your life because you're afraid to confront them and say, you really have no right to control me and manipulate me, and I'm not going to let you continue to do it. Can anybody say amen? amen? I mean, we want to come under godly authority and be submissive, but that doesn't mean that you let somebody else manipulate you and control you and live your life for you. We are to be God-pleasers and not men-pleasers. And so I was glad that God didn't have me do it right then because I sure didn't feel like I was ready. But I don't know how long went by, maybe a couple of years, and I was spending some time with the Lord again one night. And I mean, just in the middle of prayer, I heard the Holy Spirit say, the time is now. Oh, my gosh. Well, I was shaking so hard and so scared. But Dave went with me, and I went, and I sat down in front of my dad, and of course, my mother was in the house, and so I was very concerned about what was going to happen to her because she'd already had a nervous breakdown from not dealing with her issues and the things going on in our home, and I didn't want to make her sick again, and I reverted back to trying to protect a mother who never protected me. It's kind of interesting, isn't it, how you get into these goofy things that, you know, here I am trying to protect her, but yet she never protected me. And so it was, it was quite a frightful scene, but I remember confronting him and telling him, we need to talk about what you did to me. And boy, he got mad and started firing all kinds of things back at me. Well, you know, you, you wanted me to do it and this and that. I said, that is ridiculous. You controlled me with fear, and I hated you, and I hated every single thing that you did to me. And so anyway, I just told him what you did has really hurt me, and it's really caused a lot of problems in my life, and it was wrong. And I just needed to tell you how I feel about it. But I did tell him that because of my love for God, I was willing to forgive him. But I wanted him to deal with it so he could get well and not just run from it and hide from it. Well, you know, it didn't end the way I would have liked for it to have ended. But I had obeyed God. And so a door of freedom opened up for me that never could have opened if I would have continued to let the fear of man manipulate me and control me. God is not happy with us when we are more afraid of man than we have a reverential fear and awe for God. I'm not saying to be afraid of God, but we need to know that when God says it's time to deal with this, that it's time to deal with it, and our lives are not going to work well if we don't. 
And I said this this morning, but I'm going to say it again. For many of you, I'm coming with a prophetic word tonight saying to you, it's time. It's time to get the stuff out from under the rug that you've stuffed under there. You don't want to stuff your stuff. You got to deal with things because if you don't deal with them, they will deal with you. They steal your joy and they just get more deeply rooted on the inside of you and it causes deep, deep, deep problems. We don't want to run and hide from anything, not even something as little as getting the stupid closet cleaned out or getting our house in order that's a wreck. We need to stop acting like everything overwhelms us and know who we are in Christ, that he is Emmanuel, God with us, that he is in us, and the greater one lives in us. Let's don't just sing songs about it, let's live it. Amen? And so I found that God made me go back and confront some things before I could really get well and go on. I also had a great difficulty with people who had personalities like my father did. If you were raised by somebody that had a certain kind of personality and they really mistreated you, you may have the same reaction to those kinds of personalities that I did. Well, my mother was really weak in that she just wouldn't deal with my father even though she knew what he was doing. And so I grew up hating weakness. I mean, I despised weakness. I didn't want to hear anybody whining around saying, I can't, it's just too hard. It would just make me so mad I couldn't hardly stand it. And I became one of these kind of people, bless God, I'm going to do anything that I want to do. Well, that had a good side to it because it helped me press through and even do a lot of the things that I'm doing today, but I couldn't let it get out of balance and, and become like then, I felt like everybody in the whole world had to be like me and despise everybody that wasn't strong. I also had a real problem with my dad's personality. And so any, I, I had two ways of dealing with people. I either got with somebody that I could control or if I got with somebody that was super strong, I would cower down again like I did to my dad's authority and let them control me. And that's no way to live. We need to be free to be ourselves be who God created us to be, make our own decisions, live our own life, live to please God, and not be manipulated and controlled by the past or the people from our past. Amen. No matter what somebody did to you, you don't have to keep bleeding from it for the rest of your life. So, just the point that when you run from anything, God will ultimately make you go back and face it. Moses, Acts chapter 7, verse 22. So Moses was educated in all the wisdom and culture of the Egyptians, and he was mighty powerful in his speech and in his deeds. You see, God was training him for something he was going to be doing years later. And some of you right now may think that what you're doing is just so useless because you got a dream to do this other thing. But everything that we do is part of the next thing that we're going to do. Amen? And when he was in his 40th year, it came into his heart to visit his kinsmen, the children of Israel, to help them and to care for them. He had a desire to help people. That was a good thing. And on seeing one of them being unjustly treated, he defended the oppressed man and avenged him by striking down the Egyptian and slaying him. He expected, and I love this verse, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about tomorrow about why I like it so much. He expected his brethren to understand that God was granting them deliverance by his hand, taking it for granted that they would accept him, but they did not understand. You know, I thought when God called me into ministry that everybody would clap and cheer, but they did not clap and cheer. They did not understand, they were not excited, and I got the exact opposite of what I expected from people. <laughs> Do you ever get the exact opposite of what you expected from people? You know what, God doesn't want us to make our decisions based on whether or not people clap and applaud. He wants us to do what we do because we believe that's what He wants us to do. 
It's time for some people to stand up and be strong in the Lord and stop being manipulated by popular opinion. Then on the next day, he suddenly appeared to some who were quarreling and fighting among themselves, and he urged them to make peace and become reconciled, saying, Men, your brethren, why do you abuse and wrong one another? Whereupon the man who was abusing his neighbor pushed Moses aside, saying, Well, who appointed you a judge or a ruler over us? Do you intend to kill us like you did the Egyptian yesterday? Verse 29. At that reply, Moses sought safety by flight. That means he ran away. And he was an exile and an alien in the country of Midian, where he became the father of two sons. And when his... When 40 years had gone by, which now means he was 80, <laughs> my goodness, running can waste a lot of time. There God appeared to him in the wilderness. Now you'll notice in all four of these things that I'm going to share with you tonight that anytime these people ran, they always ended up in the wilderness. <laughs> Is anybody with me tonight? The wilderness is a dry, miserable, wretched place. You don't feel good about anything in your life, and then it develops all kinds of other problems because if you don't like what you're doing, then some way you have to find some way to make an excuse for it or to blame it on somebody else, and we get so far down the rabbit hole that we don't have any way, any know-how of how to get out. So after 40 more years had went by and he was now 80, God appeared to him in a burning bush. When Moses saw it, he was astonished and marveled at the sight. And then he went close to investigate and there came to him a voice of the Lord saying, now this is so good, I am the God of your forefathers, the God of Abraham, of Isaac and Jacob. And Moses trembled and was terrified so much that he did not even choose to look. Then the Lord said to him, Take your sandals off your feet. The ground on which you're standing is holy ground. Verse 34. Because I have most assuredly seen the abuse and the oppression of my people in Egypt, and I have heard their sighings and groanings, I have come down to rescue them. Now watch this. So now come, and I will send you back to Egypt. Come on, somebody ought to shout. <laughs> See, how can we ever be free from anything if we're running from it? <laughs> How can we possibly be free from it if all we hope is that we never have to deal with it again? If that's our goal, to never have to deal with anything again, I can guarantee you the devil's going to make sure that you deal with it around every corner. And the way to get to the point where you are not afraid of things is to face them. The only way that fear ever goes away is when you face it, when you confront it. Got to learn how to do it afraid. When I sat in front of my father, I was so afraid. I was shaken. I was so nervous. But I could not get on the other side of it unless I dealt with it. The only way that you can get free is to deal with things. The truth will make you free. But the truth has to be applied in your life in order to make you free. He ran from Egypt and God sent him back to Egypt. Genesis chapter 16, verses 8 and 9. Now, I know some of you, your wheels are turning. You're thinking, how does this apply to me? How does this apply to me? Well, I'm quite sure God will show you. I honestly think that some people have things buried so far down in them that it, it, it's under so many layers, still hurting them and causing them pain, but they don't even realize it's a problem in their life. Genesis chapter 16, verses 8 and 9. Now, you know, this is a situation where God had promised Abraham and Sarah a child, and Sarah wasn't getting pregnant fast enough, and many years had gone by, and she was disappointed, so she came up with this very carnal, fleshly, bright idea that she would have her handmaiden, Hagar, become her husband's secondary wife, which... You would think any woman would be smarter than that, but she wasn't. And sure enough, Hagar got pregnant, and then she got an attitude towards Sarah. Today it might go something like, hmm, 
I'm pregnant and you're not. So, so Sarah got to the point where she didn't want Hagar around anymore. So Abraham made her leave. He dealt with her, afflicting her. He didn't make her leave. And she fled. Verse 6 says she ran or she fled from the situation. Verse 7. But the angel of the Lord found her by a spring of water. Where? Where? <laughs> On the road to Shur. And he said, Hagar, Sarai's maid, where did you come from and where are you going? And she said, I'm running away from my mistress. And watch what God said to her. He didn't say, I understand, run fast. <laughs> Says the angel of the Lord said to her, go back. <laughs> well, <laughs> go back to your mistress and humbly submit to her control. Now, what kind of a thing is that? Here this woman is mistreating her She's running away from it, which seems like a reasonable thing to do. Let me tell you something. Just because you want to get away from a place that's uncomfortable for you, that doesn't mean that God wants you to leave. Now we're connecting. Hmm. Now, there are times to leave places. But it's not when you feel like it, it's when God makes you leave. <laughs> God told Abraham to leave. You leave the place where you're at. You get away from your family and all your relatives, and you go to a place that I will show you. They were all idol worshipers, and God couldn't do anything with Abraham until he got away from their influence. God may tell you to get away from some ungodly friends. He might tell you to leave a job where they're making you do things that are sinful. But there's a lot of other times when we leave someplace just because we're not being treated the way we think we deserve to be treated and maybe learning how to deal with some of those things is exactly what God wants and he's got us in the place he wants us to be for right now. I worked for somebody else in ministry for five years and I did not feel that I was treated right. And it was hard, hard. I'm talking to the maximum it was hard. It was one of the hardest things that I have ever done in my whole life to not just get up and in my style of doing it say, I'm out of here. <laughs> but you know what? That would have been easy. And then once again, I could have avoided somebody else that had a personality like my dad's. I could have taken care of myself instead of waiting for God to take care of me. Are you there? <laughs> and I knew that I knew that I knew in the pit of my gut that God did not want me to go yet. Just because you want to do something, that doesn't mean that you get to do it. Do I need to say that again? Just because you want to do something, that doesn't mean that you get to do it. If we're going to be really submitted to God, do you think it was easy for Dave to stay with me the first few years that we were married? It couldn't have been. And I don't really think that Dave ever seriously thought about leaving, but he did finally get around to saying to me, if you keep acting the way you act, I'm not sure what's going to happen. And that was kind of like Dave saying, I may just be out of here if this continues. And I knew that he wasn't the type of guy to threaten. He married me because he felt in his heart that he was supposed to. And he was committed to seeing it through to the finish. And I believe that sometimes God will take a mature Christian and he'll put them with somebody who is broken and needs help. Yeah, I know some of you are going like, oh, my In our society, we have become addicted to comfort. The Bible says that we're to serve God, whether it's convenient or inconvenient, comfortable or uncomfortable, in season or out of season.
I do think at times we all have a tendency to run from things that we should be facing. Is there a giant in your life that you believe God is asking you to face and right now you're running from it? Well, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. God wants to help you, but you have to approach Him in faith, not fear. been wondering lately, what is it that makes a person want to leave the comfort and monotony of home to come someplace crazy like this and do a medical clinic? Well, let's ask the volunteer doctors and nurses who do it all the time. Seeing the world is awesome. It's always a great adventure. Because the kids are so amazing. I do this because God put it in my heart to help others. Because it's life changing. We love it. It's awesome. Because it's really fun. So what do you think? It can't hurt to at least check it out, right? All you need to do is go to our website, JoyceMeyer.org. All the information is there for you. And just think, your adventure may begin today.